Hello and welcome to A Pint and Two Shots. What is it, Grado? It's a podcast, it's a football podcast. Um, I don't know what to tell you, Strips. I'm hearing myself this week. I was scrimping and scraping with my fingertips trying to get a guest host to join me on the show today. Unfortunately, um, not being able to do it, so it's, you're going to have to listen to me for the next hour or so. So if I manage to get through this without getting myself cancelled at some point, then I'll be seeing you next week again, hopefully. I think I should be doing this myself. Um, you know what I mean? Probably get somebody. See, it's too late now, we're here anyway, so. <laughs> Fucking hell, what happened there? Need to get the electric- electricity checked in here, man. You alright, you fanny? Oh, fuck's sake. Welcome to A Pint and Two Shots, coming to you from the G4 Podcast Studio, with part-time pundit and average actor Stephen Purden, and bringing a wealth of knowledge and questionable patter, it's our no-nonsense dafty Chris Toll. Completing our front three, it's the man himself, all the way from the tap end of Stevenson, it's Grado! I'm back. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show the legend that started this whole fucking thing. <laughs> you and Cameron, thanks very much for coming, mate. I know, I know. The reason you're here... The reason I'm here, exactly. ...is exactly. because I started Football Daft back in the day. You did. I made it a huge success. Without me, it's nothing. Without me, you're nothing. Without me, you're nobody. Without me, nobody knows who you are or cares who you are. I don't know, mate. I've done Scott Squad before we've done a fucking football daft, all right? Give me a break. Jeez, oh. Yeah, how many times have you been in Scott Squad? Oh, more times than I can't remember. Oh, so you've been a few times then? I've filmed for it a few times, but I've actually made the television twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've left my... Um, Jamie, go and do us a favour, mate. Go and give me my coffee and my juice. Sorry. Oh, it's a podcast, anything goes on a podcast This is it, you can say whatever you want I know, car keys, everything's over there oh, And coke. orange juice as well, and my coke, and my coffee <laughs> I've, I've come prepared for you all Thank you Jamie Who brings three different types of liquid to a podcast? Right, so, let, so I went to Costa Coffee, right? And right, I got okay. myself a large cappuccino with an extra shot You need the extra shot so you can taste the coffee right, okay. I then got myself a fresh orange juice because that's healthy mm-hmm. And it was nice and cold and chilled after I have my coffee And when I got here to the studio Greg offered me a can of Coca-Cola To and cleanse I, the palate To cleanse the palate, yeah. so that's why I've got oh, the that's three like, That's like when you go for an Italian meal and you have a wee bit of sorbet Correct, at the end, at the end of it, at every Coca-Cola time Coca-Cola sorbet uh, Jamie, you haven't brought me the script Where's the script? To see, it's he's got there, a script it's under the, it's under the Jamie, go and get me the script for Listen, it's sake. not a script, it's a guideline It's a script? It's a guideline They showed me it earlier it, See if it was a script, it would be like this Top 10 headlines, Michael Beale signs as Rangers manager until 2026. SFA change rules to limit exercises at a repetitive heading to once a week and not the day before or after a game. Celtic close to signing Alistair Johnson from CF, Mon- CF Montreal defender. What? Is this how this, this shite goes? No, but what I'm saying is it's not a fucking script. It's a guideline. Mate, there are pages it's, of it's stuff organic. here. It's, it's organic. It's not organic. It's organic. You're scripted. You talk about it. Like, listen, you're the one that says that you're unscripted, but I've seen... You've went through every single one of the things in that world. Right, okay, see this. See if it was unscripted. But this you thing... didn't know what was in that. I know what's in here. Exactly, so yeah. you're scripted but and you all. you don't know what's in here. This is from my podcast, You and Cat Uncut, and we'll get to that towards the end of this podcast. What's the name of this shite again? A pint and two shots. Right, I'm on a pint and two shots, and the reason I'm doing this is because Grado and Stephen Purden are at the panto at the pavilion, they are. and they can't be here, so I got the call from Ben, oh, do you mind coming in and doing us a wee favour and covering the, what's the name of it? Fuck you, man. What's the name of this? You it's know, a confusing name. A pint and two right. shots. can you come in? I know you've never had to buy three drinks at the bar, because <laughs> no cunt will go out for a drink with you, right? That's not my fault. It's only three drinks you need to remember, and right. two of them are the same. Okay, right, right. I'll, I'll, I'll refer to my script <laughs> when I need to remember the name of this pishy podcast. Oh, it's no, nothing. I'm starting, I'm, wish, can... I'm starting to wish we'd asked Cat. <laughs> it's nothing like when I was running football daft. No, not at all. It was not better then. I meant to ask you. Yeah. What happened with football daft? <laughs> Why did you leave? 
Do you want the honest answer? I want the honest answer. Fuck's sake, mate. We probably can't hear that. <laughs> right. Right. I'll just... So, Ewan, what have you been up to anyway? What have I been up to? Well, I am, um, I'm i obviously doing a podcast with Kat. You are indeed. Uh, Ewan and Kat Uncut. We're in the studio down the stairs. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're up here, which is a lovely studio, by the way. It's Can nice I just say it's it? nice? I mean, nice. it's too cool and groovy for you lot. Uh, it's obviously too cool and groovy for you, so you should be doing it in here. Look at the way I'm dressed, mate. Mm-hmm. Look at the way you're dressed. See you Aye. with your G4 claims Aye. t-shirt on. See you You're a your, corporate whore. See you with your dafty early 2000s outfit. I don't like hearing for you already. Look at you, you corporate whore. Fair enough, listen, we've all got to be corporate whores at some point in our <laughs> life, don't we? Uh, so yeah, I'm doing a, a podcast with Cat, you and Cat on Cat. I also do a football podcast. You do? At you Radio do Clyde. Indeed. It's um, the big Scottish football podcast. So I do still have my nose in football. Still got your finger in the pie. Still what, got my finger what, in the what pie. What have you been making the World Cup then? Loving the World Cup. Mm-hmm. It's one of the best World Cups in a number of years, I think. Really? So just because of the shocks. I don't think the football's been as great. I don't think there's been many entertaining games, but in regards to the intrigue and the shock factor, mm-hmm. I think it's been a really interesting World Cup for I that reason. Well, I'm not out of the group yet, and I think it's had the most 0-0 draws in any World Cup. See, I haven't even noticed that, because I think the games have been intriguing. Because of, so? I, I mean, look at Australia through, look at what oh, Japan did, I look know. what Saudi Arabia have done, look at what Morocco have done. I mean, there's been some really big results. Japan and Spain tonight, isn't it? Or is that, is that today? Is, it, is that happening right do you know how? Do you know how a podcast works? What? Aye. Right. So this so is you, this is uh, the day after. So Aye, don't worry, I'll tell them that we're, we're... If you go into the next page, you're not going to make it. Ah, you've got it there. Right, okay. See? That's why we need it, Ewan. I told you. So right. we, we have a script here. So we are recording on Thursday, obviously the show will go out tomorrow, but today we've got Canada versus Morocco, which I think the Canadians have been pretty unlucky. Do you not think so? I think they've played really well. They did do, you, not... do you want us to talk about the World Cup in great detail and depth here? No, I'm just going to go through the, the days. Go and tell me something about Canada football then. Uh, Celtic are linked with the right back called Alistair Johnson. Can you go so through... He, can, ironically, he, used to but, be a name of a Rangers director, I believe. Okay. Mate... Can we try mm-hmm. our very best mm-hmm. for you not to connect Celtic to everything we talk about today? You asked me to name Cause it see when Because see whenever I listen to this podcast, what's the name of it again? What's the name of it again? What's it called? Shots in a Pint. You and Chris Uncut. You and Chris Uncut, okay. You always find a way to connect Celtic to every topic and no, every that's subject. because I'm surrounded by Rangers supporters, Right, mate. okay. So we're talking about the World Cup, and I've asked you to tell me something about Canada, and the yeah. first thing you do is you think mm. of Celtic. Take Celtic out of the equation, tell me something else about Canada something that about, you know. Something about Canada that no, I the, know. No, the football team, or the, 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 the or team. even the country. Um, What's it famous for? Uh, Canada is famous for beavers, trailer, trailer park boys, and beavers, and beavers, which Glasgow's famous for an all, but <laughs> different type of beaver. Um, what else? They're, they're famous for poutine. You ever had poutine? What poutine? I don't know what you're talking about. Right, poutine is cheese curds with French fries and gravy, and it sounds disgusting, but it's one of the most delicious things you'll ever eat in your life. Could I get that in, school, in Glasgow? Yes. Bur- uh, bread meets bread. They do that? They do it, and they do it as close to the real Canadian stuff as, as okay. you'll get. Name me somebody famous from, from Canada. Canada. Somebody famous from Canada. Brett the Hitman Hart. I met Brett the Hitman Hart. Did you? I met him at Tynecastle Football oh, Club. Oh, when, when Tynecastle held SummerSlam that year. Oh, I wish Grado was here, he'd have got that joke. <laughs> How did you meet Brett the Hitman Hart? Did they do like an interview thing at Tynecastle or something? It was a QA. and a he was doing a QA and a at, at Tynecastle, and I turned up to do an interview with him for STV. You always turn up whenever there's somebody famous arrives in Scotland, don't you? Because I'm the man they tell want to speak this, to. Tell me this one. Right, how come you never turned up at Michael Beale's unveiling? When you were that far up Stephen Gerrard's arse, it looked like a it looked like a Ewan Cameron Pez dispenser. <laughs> I'm going to explain this to you one last time, right, when it comes to Stephen Gerrard, right? Yes. There's been a lot of pish talked about in recent years about me and Stephen Gerrard and my connection to Rangers, right? right? Okay. So let me explain this to you, okay? You're listening. It's just a season ticket, isn't it? Right. Are you listening? Yes, I'm right. listening. At the time I was working at STV, and obviously rumours had been circulating the week before that Stephen Gerrard was getting the job, 
right? And I'm a huge Liverpool fan. Right. And I always admire Steven Gerrard as a Liverpool captain. And when the story was breaking that he might be turning up at Rangers, I not only thought it was good for Rangers, but I thought it was a brilliant signing for Scottish football. Oh, well, no doubt about right? That. So I did get very excited at the idea of Steven Gerrard turning up at Rangers. And when it did finally get announced that he was going to be the new Rangers manager, uh, me and a camera crew went down to Ibrox. And out on the road, there were thousands of Rangers fans mm-hmm. waiting for Stephen Gerrard to maybe come out on the stairs outside Ibrox and hold the scarf above his head. Yeah, and, the and we were there with the camera um, waiting for that moment. And somebody high up at Rangers decided to open up the doors to the main stand and allow the fans in. So we just went in with the fans. We weren't part of the media contingent. We were in with the fans. So I was in there with the fans with a cameraman. And I said to the cameraman, don't ask questions, just follow me. So I I don't want to drop anyone in it. I know a couple of people at Rangers who work behind the scenes. And I said, I'm going to jump the wall and I'm going to film the Rangers fans from the pitch side for STV. And he went, fine, but you can't stay there. Get your shots, get over the wall and get back in amongst the fans because we're not allowing the media out, etc., mm-hmm. etc. Photographers, yes, but anyway. And you'd done a typical union and decided not to follow the rules? I didn't follow the rules, no. So we jumped the wall, we took some shots of the Rangers fans, and then I went over to the tunnel area and I could see Stephen Gerrard standing at the top of the tunnel mm-hmm. um, with the Rangers scarf, etc., etc., and then um, a, a policeman try, a policeman came up to me and he goes, you, you're going to have to get off the pitch or off the, the track and you need to get back into the stand. And I went, mate, come on. Nobody's going to know. Just let me get the shots. I'm not going to annoy Stephen. I'm not going to hassle him. I'm not going to run up to him with a microphone or anything. I'm just here to get the shots. He went, right, okay, don't. Right, just keep yourself keep yourself out the way. Keep yourself out the way, and as you've probably noticed, the TV footage it's me chasing Stephen Gerrard doing the track, <laughs> and then grabbing him by the shoulder, and then pulling him in to get an interview with him. And if you notice in the, the shots on TV, the security guy has got me by the shoulder, as I've got Stephen Gerrard by the shoulder. And cats get the security man by the shoulder. <laughs> Leave him alone, you. So I got the first interview with Stephen Gerrard in front of the Rangers fans at Ibrox. And I've got to say, that was an unbelievable day because it felt great for Rangers, yes, and I understand their excitement, but I thought it was also a brilliant day for Scottish football. Uh, And 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 even though Stephen Gerrard was... I mean, he didn't have much experience when it comes to management. He was he was looking after the kids in Liverpool, but but still, what a signing that was for Rangers, and um, and yeah, I thought he did a decent enough job. So that's why I was excited to all about Stephen Gerrard, and that's mm-hmm. why I was there and chasing after him because I was a fan of Stephen Gerrard, not Rangers. And the reason I wasn't there when Michael Beale was unveiled is because I don't really care. Okay, right, he's, he's, he's not got the same stature as Steven Gerrard, has no, he? No, there's, there's very few that have in British football, to be honest with you. Yeah, and you know do, I mean? but do you know who else I got excited about? Yeah. Brendan Rodgers. Because he'd done such a great job at Liverpool and was so unlucky not to win the Premier League. When Celtic and signed him up... It's fault that he never won the league. Well, exactly. And, and see, when Celtic signed up Brendan Rodgers, mm. I thought, what a brilliant signing that is for Scottish mm-hmm. football when he was doing so well in the Premiership. I remember seeing the day that Brendan Rodgers was announced. Mm-hmm. I knew before anybody... And the reason that I knew before anybody was, I was driving home from my work, and as I was passing Celtic Park, the screen changed to welcome Brendan Rodgers. Oh, right? did it? And it hadn't been announced or anything like that. They were just preparing. And I took I took a photo of it, and I sent it to my mates. I was like, Brendan Rodgers, the new manager. Sure enough, not quite as cool as your fucking story, but it was still <laughs> good, wasn't it? I'd have been straight to the book to put some money on. <laughs> <laughs> no, was, that information. I think it was about 40 to 1 on at that point. Um, so, um, name somebody famous for Canada. Somebody famous for Canada. Um, I'm trying to think of like an actor or something. Like that. Actor or singer? Um, Come on. Uh, Celine Dion? She's for Canada, aren't she? She's, is she Canadian? I thought she, uh, is she uh, Swiss? Is she Swiss Canadian? Or something like that? Bonjour. Brian Adams. Brian Adams, aye. Shania Twain. Shania, is Shania Twain Canadian? Is she no, is she no ca- she's a, she's a uh, country and western. Oh, you're right, aye, aye. And maybe I'm getting her mixed up with, Shania, um, with Celine Dion. 
I think you are. Yeah. I think you are. Um, so in, oh, there oh, you go. go. Up you. All right, fair dues. Fair dues. Um, so Canada, Morocco, you were saying that Canada been unlucky in this World Cup. What can you tell me about Morocco? Um, Morocco, uh, the <laughs> the capital of Morocco... Begins with an R. ...is Riyadh? That's Saudi Arabia. Rutherglen? <laughs> <laughs> it might actually not be Rabat. I think the is capsule. It not, is it not Marrakesh? Is it not Istanbul? No, oh, it's, it's Turkey. Turkey. I can tell you if you want. Is it Marrakesh? Does it begin with an M? No. Does it begin with R? Yeah. Rabat? Yeah. I said that. Rabat. Rabat. Uh, Croatia, Belgium, also in the World Cup. Mm-hmm. What um, would you like to say about that? Belgium, known for its waffles. And the inventors of the French fry. Which is a strange fact. There you go. The Belgians invented the French fry. Correct. That's what you're telling me today. Yes. Is that your fact of the day? That's you, that's my fact for Belgium. Okay, we've got um, Ben in the corner there who's googling this fact. Is it true or is it false? Did the French fire fry uh, come Ewan, from Belgium? You're asking me if I don't know about chips. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it true? Yeah. It's true. Well done, you. What about Croatia? Can you tell me about Croatia? Croatia. Uh, most of Game of Thrones was filmed there. I didn't know that. Well, there you See, go. I'm not a fan of Game of Thrones. Really? Although I did watch the Red Room scene. Uh, the Red Wedding? Oh, the Red Room's Fifty Shades, isn't it? I don't know, mate. I've never read that. but I've okay. not read it. I've watched yeah. it. <laughs> have, you, have you not watched Fifty Shades? No, I haven't, man. You, you've not been in Christian Grey's um, Red Room? I have not. I Would have you like not. to go into the Red Room? I've been in much worse places, you <laughs> know. <laughs> I know why. I know some of the people you hang out with, mate. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, cr- Croatia... Game of Thrones. Costa Rica, Germany. What can you tell me about Costa Rica? Uh, Costa Rica. Um, they beat Scotland at Italian 90, 1 0. They did. That was a shocker that day. What can you tell me about Germany? Uh, I've got a bit of history, haven't they? What's that? <laughs> Over the years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Japan? Uh, that's my team that I'm supporting. I think they're, they're going to beat Spain tonight. Are you no annoyed yes. that two of Celtic's best players aren't in that Japan squad? Listen. Don't get me started on Maeda, mate. If you've listened to the show, how's Maeda on in that squad ahead of I don't Hatate know. and Kaigo? Is it how'd you say his name? Kyogo. Kyogo. You would think you'd know after he'd scored about forty goals against your team, but <laughs> all right. Um, you know your your stadium announcer says it about three times a game. <laughs> Go for Celtic. It's number eight. How do you say this again? I host a podcast called The Big Scottish Football Podcast. <laughs> and you don't know how to say Kyogo? Where I have somebody else to say it for me. <laughs> <laughs> for fuck's sake. So, um, yeah, what, can, can, I, know, I, know, I know you've talked about the podcast, but that for me was baffling when he named that squad. When you look at the goals the boy's been scoring for you. It's not just that. I think Hitachi's been our best player this season, Ewan, and oh, that's unreal. I'm really surprised that he's not in the Japan squad. But our, looking at the, Jap- the Japan team... Maeda started the first game. <laughs> no. Right? No. Crazy. Are Spain winning the World Cup? I think they'll go close. I think England are going to win it, mate. I really do. I, I, I said this last week, and I really do think England are right. going to win it. They've got Senegal on Sunday. If they get uh, through, they get France. They get France. And I think that France can be got at defensively. I don't well, think Tunisia they're that great. Yeah, 100%. But there again, France did play uh, a weekend a team. Chances, aye, aye. Yeah, they, they gave the... the, the the, the periphery, a wee chance. But if you're going to win a World Cup, you, and you need to have strength and depth. They don't have it. I think England England, does. England have a better strength and depth than France. Oh, I think Brazil have got the best strength and depth going forward, but again, I think you can get Brazil I defensively. Spain, like you're mentioning there, I think Spain have got a decent squad. Spain have got a, a, a right good blend of youth and experience in the mm. Spain squad. I think England have got that as well, and I think that they're a more rounded team, England. I think Brazil are very, very good. They've got eight amazing forward players. Oh, I mean, they could change four quite okay. easily. They've got no midfield. They go no, straight for defence. I know, front. it's unreal. But they're missing Neymar now. So. I don't think that's a big loss. I don't like the boy. I don't rate the boy. I think his theatrics bring Brazil down. I don't like it. I thought Brazil were actually a better team when he was taken off against... Who was it again? Um, it was the first game, wasn't it? So it When they won 2-0 with um, were a couple Ser- of goals. Serbia, was it? Serbia, yeah. I, I thought they were a much better team when he was off. I think Vinicius Jr. is their star man now. Right. He's unreal. Definitely. Rodrigo from Real Madrid. He's a star in the making yes, as well. well. Um, Richarlison, a couple of good goals as well. But yeah, I think Brazil, England, Spain are probably the three for me. Argentina might come good. I think 
England winning it is going to be overshadowed by the absolute circus that is this World Cup. You think so? Well, if you, I've never heard three Lions once since it started. That's true. I think they and don't. They I, usually, I, have got it blazing and Asda and all of that. You know. What I, mean? I think they don't believe at the moment. I think if they get to the quarterfinals and they beat France. Mm-hmm. That's them more or less booked their place in the final because they could play someone like Switzerland or Portugal in the semi final or Croatia. Well, we'll they'll get to the final. If they beat France, they'll get to the final. If they beat France, they'll win it. Well, they'll have Brazil in the final then. Brazil or Argentina. Uh, but we've got a, a time travel that's told us that it's France and Brazil in the final and Brazil win 2 1. Well, Mar- but, 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 Marquinhos is the first goal scorer. Well, do you know what? It can work out to be France and Brazil in the final, and that's what the bookies think it'll be, yep. France versus Brazil. Yep, that's it. But so, what happens now in this podcast now that we've done the World Cup? So, we've spoken about the World Cup. Let's talk a wee bit more about Scottish football now. Is right? there anything so, happening? Well, let's uh, talk about Celtic. No, let's, let's talk about Rangers and their new manager. Michael Beale. Yes. What I have noticed that he's back to being Michael now that he's a Rangers manager. Did you notice that? Mm-hmm. He's been Mick Beale for the last yeah. year. It's Michael now. I know, it's like uh, Ted McMinn all over again, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> That's one for the old age listeners, by the way. Um, but Michael Beale comes in with a lot of, he's, he's got a lot of good grace in the Rangers fans, um, amongst the Rangers fans, I think, because of what he helped achieve a couple of seasons back. A lot of people say that it was his job that got the League One rather than Gerrard's, but... Do you think this is maybe a wee step too far for him just now? Or I think Ali McCoy saying that he's not ready for the job. And he, I trust he, Ali. He, here's some, I'm going to say something that's going to upset a few Rangers fans. I think he's got a wee bit of the Ian Cathro's about him. You think so? I can understand what you're saying now. I get, I, I get that. He talks a really good game. I mean, talks a cracking game. He's maybe a better assistant. Yeah, or coach than he is a I mean, don't get me wrong, he started off great at QPR, but they lost four of their last five. Mm-hmm. Um, he's only managed... You get, you get nine wins in aye. 28 games or something. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a gamble. Mm-hmm. What do so, you think? I, do you know what? It's, like I say, he's in the good graces of Rangers fans. I think he'll get a bit of time, which a lot of managers don't get. Now. He can't lose. I think, he, I think he's got a free hit at it because Celtic are so good and they're nine points clear. I think what I, he I understand what you're saying there, but I, I said this to Greg last week, mate. It doesn't matter what you if you're a Celtic or Rangers manager, you don't get a free hit. I think he does. I think he will but get he, he will get he loses, time. What if he loses five games on the bounce? He's gonna be out the door. And then you need to start it. But I've got I've got a fair idea, a fair inkling that I think he's gonna do all right. I think if it's I don't see the gap getting a lot bigger with the exception of the, the Celtic Rangers games. You know what I mean? So I don't I think he's get I think he's got enough about him to shore up Rangers where Will he close the gap? No, I don't think he will close the gap. So what needs to happen to give Rangers a chance of winning the league? Right, they need, he need, they he need needs to, to he needs to go un he needs to win every game right up until the, the next old firm game. I think he needs to win every game right up until the last old firm game. You think so? Yes. You don't see Celtic slipping up at any point? No, I don't. So, so if they're so going to make this nine-point so gap back... If, if we'll, so, well, well, first, first, first thing they need to do mm-hmm. is get it to six points, and to do that, you need to win at Ibrox yep. against Celtic. Mm-hmm. That takes it to six points, and then... But that's only if you've won every game up to that. I think they probably will. I've looked at the fixtures. They've got Hibs when they first come back at Ibrox. Mm-hmm. The Rangers fans will be excited. New manager, new outlook, new enthusiasm... And Hibs are a nightmare, and they've just lost their best player in Martin Boyle, who's out for the rest of the season. So I think they'll beat Hibs comfortably. I think there's problems at Easter Road with Lee Johnson in charge. So that's a good game for him to start with. See mm-hmm. if it was a way to Tynecastle or a way to St. Johnson or a way to Aberdeen, it would have been a sticky start for him. But I okay. think this is an easy one. He'll get a great welcome. The fans will be up for it. The players will be up for it. So I think they could win that comfortably. I don't think they get beat. I don't think they drop any points. Then it becomes a head-to-head between Celtic and Rangers. And I think on that day, if Rangers, if Celtic were to win it, the title's done. If Celtic go 12 points clear mm-hmm. at the start of January, you can already forget the title. It's gone. It's finished. They have to win that game and take it back to six points. And by taking it back to six points, they put a doubt in Celtic's head. And it gets the Celtic fans a wee bit worried because mm-hmm. they will have seen the effects of Michael Beale on that team who had been playing pish under Geo. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of pressure. Aye. But he needs to go unbeaten and he has to win every game up until the old firm game. 
And so when you get them to Ibrox and you've won three in a row, mm. then you wouldn't rule Rangers out getting something well, against Celtic. That's what I was going to say. I, I think that he's got he's got enough about him to shore up the mistakes that Van Bronckhorst has made, and he's also got the dressing room as well. They all know him, right? I think maybe towards the end there, Gio was maybe too much of a nice guy. You know what I mean? And when it when it came to the squad, because they, I think they kind of maybe lost a bit of respect from our down tools a wee bit. They were they were really quite poor the la- that last wee stretch going into the, the World So what Cup. you're saying is that Celtic are in a false position? No, what I'm saying is Celtic have got a better manager than Rangers had and there's no false positions when it comes to the league. In a roundabout way, you're saying that Celtic no, are in a no, false no, position? No, 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 wait a minute. No, what I'm saying is they're not in a false position because Rangers had a manager that couldn't get the best out of them. Celtic have got a manager that does get the best out of them. So that's not a false position. Can I take my jacket off? I'm glad, man. What you got under there? A, um, Ed Hardy t-shirt or mate, something like mate, that? Mate, no, it's from Premark. You got nothing on underneath that? That's right, because I was getting a wee bit excited about you and coming on the show. No, I mean, I thought we were going to go top, taps off. What do you reckon then? Do you think he'll, he'll close the gap? <sighs> You don't really have anything to go on, don't you? Not you that's, that's, that's my point. Aye, it because it's, it's his, managerial, point, aye, right? it's his managerial career, you can't even really look at it. No, well, how can't. many games is it? It's QPR uh, in total. 20 odd. I think he's got nine wins. So I think he's got a win ratio at about 45%. And they, they were top of the league and then they dropped to seventh because yeah. they went four defeats and five. But see with that week. Oh, everyone goes through that. I mean, that's exactly. fine. I mean, everyone does that. I mean, even the best teams in that league go up and down, up and down. I'll and be go honest through. with you, I would love to see QPR winning that league now. Did you see Lyndon Dykes? Oh, for his little tweets sake. on Instagram. I talk about uh, under understated slaggings. Totally backhanded compliments. So, um, what's what's the name of the podcast again? <laughs> what's the name of this again? Anyway, aye. Right, we're so, moving on. So, um, a lot of a lot of things have been said about concussions and stuff, stuff like that in football. Yes, and the SFA have decided that they're changing the rules to limit the exercises that are repetitive heading yeah. to once, Brilliant. once a week, and not the day before or after a game. Scotland are leading the way, absolutely. And absolutely. I think it was a brilliant decision, um, and I'm sure the clubs will follow the rules. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there, there's. There's nothing much more you can say about so that other than... It, the day before and after a game... Straight after a game, yeah. five sides. Yeah, which is great. Ball, ball not above head. Yeah. I think that this could work out well for Scottish football on a grander scale. You know, because it kind of limits that whole lump the ball lump up the ball training up, yeah, and stuff totally, like that. Yeah. Learn how to play with the ball on the ground. Yeah, at the feet. It's, it's, for me, it's a ironic state of turn the phrase here it's a no-brainer Aye. for me you know it's brilliant it's hopefully we'll see in the, the coming years and it's going to be over generations rather than an overnight sort of thing when I played football for many many years it was lump the ball up to the big boy up front mm-hmm. and then you run off him mm-hmm. I was a left winger left midfield and it was always hit the target man and you run off him and the target man would be hit and he'd either flick it to the right, flick it to the left and use it to run beyond them. I was always the target man. (laughs) (laughs) Is that why we never won any games? Exactly. That's why we never went to USA in 94. (laughs) So it's a great rule change. Definitely. And Scotland are leading the way on that. Uh, What else does your script say? You mentioned earlier on... This is a script, everybody. He says it's not a script, but he sat there reading it like he's a newsreader. Have you you seen the Oscars? See when somebody comes out and they get their wee... A wee bit of paper out, that's what it's like. It's like the Oscars, except you're not getting an award. Right, hold on a wee second. See that envelope they bring out the Oscars? Aye. Right. The person who wins uh-huh. gets that. That's part of the prize. Right, well, you can keep that. I don't want to keep that, though. I don't give a shit for this A4 piece of paper. It makes good roaches. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that in my life, do you know really? that? You need to come to my house one night. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Martin Boyle, out for the rest of the season. You touched on it earlier on. Aye. Is that- is that a huge, a huge, huge loss, loss for it? Hibs? I mean, Hibs have been plummeting down the table, mm. and there's problems there with Lee Johnson. I do not know what's going on at Hibs. They could get dragged into a relegation are not, battle. Are they not third or something about going mental? Are they not third in the league? No. What, what, they what? were third in the league recently. Probably. They were third in the league. I think they're closer yeah. to third than they are to relegation, but their recent form going into the World mm. Cup was really poor, and they are not playing well. Hibs, Hibs are eighth. They're eighth in the league. How, how, how many points are they after? Uh, five. 
five. And how many points are they off the relegation battle? Uh, five. five. So there you go. Oh. So they are going in the wrong direction. And I think if they're not careful, they could be dragged into the playoff position or even the relegation place. That, that Rangers game that you were talking about earlier is going to be a huge match. Huge. For them, ma- massive going. for both clubs. Um, poor Ace to leave Hibs at the end of the season. No surprise. Well-known Hibs fan refuses to sign Hibs contract. A lot of Hibs fans really upset that he hasn't signed a new deal to try and get them some money. Do you take him at time, Castle? I would take him in a heartbeat. I think he's a great defender. I oh. really do. And I know he, he, he has his, his wild moments, but I think, especially when he played for Scotland against... Who was it again? It was against Serbia, wasn't it? No, it was no, it uh, wasn't Ukraine. Serbia. Ukraine. Ukraine. He was outstanding in that match. Um, and I, I think he plays well for Hibs. He just has his. I, I, you know what it is? I think it's naivety. I think it's inexperience. I think it's that playing, not playing against, not playing with the level of players he's yeah, playing against. Correct. So. I th- I think he could end up down south. I, I know so. Celtic are sniffing about. It's the thing is though, you and like, I've this is a bugbear of mine. I've said it on the show loads of times. See somebody like Ryan Portis who, let's be honest, would be in and about the Celtic and Rangers first. First team squad, probably at Ibrox he would be starting every week just now because of the the issues that they've had with injuries. And Who stuff does like. he start ahead of at Celtic? Um, does he get ahead of Starfelt? Maeda. <laughs> oh, so you do. <laughs> You've really got a problem with Maeda. Just take Maeda out. Put anybody <laughs> in that position, mate. It's do you think he's better than Starfelt? No, I don't. I think Carl Starfelt so, is a majorly underrated player. Man. So, do, are you saying then Portis would be on the bench at Celtic? I think he probably would. Be. And he'd start at Rangers. Right now, I but if Rangers have got a full squad, I don't think he starts. So where's he going? This is what I was trying to say. These players who are right good players by Scottish league standards, they end up down at fucking Darlington and Derby County and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Because the money's it, better. It's brutal, mate. We lose a lot of good talent yeah. to these teams that you wouldn't go and watch. No. You know? So where is he going to end up? Um, Do you think he stays in Scotland? No, I think you're, I think he could maybe follow a couple of them onto the continent. Like Germany? Well, we've Spain. Got, we've got a few players in Italy yeah. just now. Josh Doig's there. Ferguson's doing a good Ferguson's job. Bologna. Well. Is get, it Bologna he's at? Yep, you've Bologna. got Liam Henderson. Liam Henderson's doing good. He's at Cagli. Cagliari. I think Cagliari, there was, yeah. there was a talk of him. There was actually a few mentions of him going to Rangers recently. Which would I did see that. Is there any truth in that? I doubt it. Nah. Because unless they've known that Mick Beale's coming in and he's been keeping an eye on them for QPR or something. There's like also that. talk of Leon Balligan coming back. I know, I know, but did he not I wonder if he signed a, a long term deal at QPR. But he might have a clause in the contract. Aye. If Who knows? Imagine having a clause in the contract to go back to a team that didn't want you in the summer. That's a ready, isn't it? <laughs> yes yeah. <laughs> But as I, as, I, as I said on the, the football podcast that I work on, see when somebody comes... What's that called? Uh, the big Scottish football podcast. Right, okay. um, what's the name of this one again? <laughs> <laughs> it's um, called Fuck You. <laughs> <laughs> see when Rangers Celtic come calling. Yes. You don't say no. I don't... Uh, unless... Unless it's AC Milan, Inter Milan, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Liverpool, Man City, Spurs, Arsenal, Man United, you do not say no to Celtic and Rangers. Any other club, you don't. You just don't say no. Somebody wants to tell that to Eddie Howe. Bastard. There's more to that. There must be. Why, why did he... Why He's did, been sounded out. But, but, you know, the... You know that that Newcastle job's coming but up. That's you're, going be, that's you're going to be the manager that, but, of the richest but, club in the world. But, that, that's, but that's my point. There's more to that. Aye, aye. There's no more to that because you don't take the Newcastle job as it was under Mike Ashley ahead of Celtic. You don't. No, certainly Right? Not. So you clearly know and you're hearing the rumours around and the talk around what's happening at Newcastle. There have been uh, many occasions where they tried to buy the club, the Saudis, mm-hmm. and they kept getting it knocked back. The, the Steve Lee, what's her name? Not Jessica Stevely, not Emma Stevely. T- Graham Stevely. Not Graham, no, that's that's your man who um, was on the panel just now. That's right. Stavely, what's her name? Um, she owns Amanda. it. Amanda. Sta- Amanda Stavely. 
Anyway, no bad. What's the tag come from? It wasn't even on my script time. No, it was, that was amazing. That. Uh, so they'd been trying for a, a couple of years and they kept getting knocked back and there were other reasons or other problems where they couldn't get hold of the club. So I think there's every chance that Eddie Howe knew that was coming up at some point, which is why he knocked back Celtic. I think he also had his eyes on the Southampton job as well. That Well, again, why would you choose Southampton over Actually, Celtic? Support, so. I why was, would you choose Van, Southampton over Celtic? Let's ask Virgil van Dijk. <laughs> Victor Wanyama, no, I'm, I'm, Stuart Armstrong. No, no, wait, I'm, I'm talking about managers. Right, okay, I'm talking okay, about managers. Fair. I'm not talking about players because I can understand why Virgil van Dijk would make the move. Better money, better league, and a chance to then step on to another level, which he did with Liverpool. Mm -hmm. uh, Victor Wanyama is another one. Mm -hmm. I mean, how I many players? Spurs, Spurs, Spurs as well. So you, you've got a few in there. And I thought, what's his name, who's at Southampton just now? Armstrong, Armstrong is playing really well just now. He's, he's, he's probably one of their best players know, this season. Sure Armstrong, but he's, his decision making is pretty poor. It's not great. Well, let's go back to that qualifier well, so against England. No, but I, I do think <laughs> that if you, you're a manager at a level like QPR or anything like that, yes, I know that McBeal was was touted for the Wolves job. McBeal, that sounds like a fucking seasonal burger for McDonald's. <laughs> Uh, but um, yeah, the McBeal, please. Rain Rangers and Celtic, you are not taking the Wolves' job if Rangers and Celtic are knocking at your door. You just don't. That's true. That's true. But you don't then go out and say, "Oh, actually, no, you do." What you say, I'm, you do. I'm loyal. I'm yeah. as loyal as a man can yeah. be. It's all about integrity, etc., etc., etc. Of course, you're saying that. But as soon as Rangers or Celtic or Liverpool or Spurs or Man United or AC Milan or Inter Milan, Real Madrid or Barcelona come knocking on your door, you're going bye bye. You are. Fair enough, fair enough. So, also... So, you know what, you're telling me, right, a month ago, mm. right, you're working on this podcast. What's the name of it? What's the name of it again? Uh, the Big Scottish Football Podcast. Brilliant, right? So, you're working on this podcast. You've got Grado and Stephen, right? And you're loving every second of it. Yep. And there's been rumours flying about that you might be wanted for another podcast. For example, the one that I work on. Right. The Big Scottish Football Podcast, right? I and, stop and there then, because and, this actually happened to right, us recently. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so the, this this is you, right? Right. right? And you have decided, no, that's not for me. And you come on to this mm -hmm. podcast and you say to Stephen and you say to um, Bob, guys, it's about integrity. I'm with you. We're mm -hmm. in this together. Um, I'm not going anywhere. We've started something here and we're just going to grow it and we're going to get bigger, right? A week later, Christ I'm the Barcelona that comes knocking on your door with the big Scottish football podcast. You're going to go. You're going to go. I don't know, there's, a, there's, going to, there's going to Barcelona under Pep and then there's going to Barcelona <laughs> under you. <laughs> well, I mean, but, you, but, but, but you know what I'm getting at? I'll tell you this The money's right better now. and I'll it's... I'll tell you this right now. I'm going nowhere without the two boys. They stood by me, so I'm standing by them. <laughs> End of story. End of story. However, However, if Barcelona come and say, we'll take our threes, I'm sorry G4 claims, but... Camp now is where we're recording from now on. <laughs> so would you stick with those two through thick and thin? 100%, mate. Right? I'm trebling your money. Wait, wait. They're, they're doing the panto and I'm no. Okay, so. right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to quadruple your money. Uh -huh. And I'm going to take you away from those two. Are you still telling, you still saying to me, no, I'm not going anywhere. I'm sticking with them two. I'm quadrupling your money. Well, that goes back to the Ryan Portis, doesn't it? I'm quadrupling your money. And I'm giving you a bigger platform. And do I get a telly show out yet? Can we go back on the STV too, mate? <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but, 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 but you know what I mean? That, that, that's, that's the problem that players and managers there's face. A there's a difference for me. There's a difference, right? And in, in our, our line of work, what we're doing just now, right? It's easy for you to say, I'm going nowhere. Right, but four, like, four times my money, quadrupling my money, is like, life-changing. Correct. Right? Whereas if you're a footballer and you're already on a hundred grand a week, somebody going four hundred grand a week, is that that life changing? Yeah. You think so? Of course it is, because your career is so short. No, it could be true. it could end tomorrow when it comes to your football career. I'm telling you right now, you are dumping these two if I'm giving you four times your money. You're not you're not even saying cheer to them, you're just slamming the door shut and as you're walking past the window that's there, you're sticking your fingers up at them going Chucking <laughs> fivers at them. Ah, exactly. <laughs> there he's go. There I'm you off. go. Join I'm off. And shield in your prick. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, fair enough. However, you're saying you're saying earlier on, 
somebody's got to go, right? Aye. In the Scottish Cup, fourth round, somebody's got to go. And it's Hearts or Hibs. Oh, no, Hibs are gone. Yeah, and you will oh, go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, road. oh, God, aye, easy, right, easy. Okay, so. So we've moved from talking about Ryan Portis to now talking about Scottish Cup. Aye, because we're still talking about Hibs. Right, okay. It's a decent segue there. I'm not sure it was. You yeah. kind of threw me for a second. That's because you're not used to this whole Cause, thing. Because here on my script it says nothing about the Scottish Cup, it says something about Morton. Aye, but we don't talk about that person. Do we know? No, because... Do we know? No. Not no. allowed to mention it at all? No, so why is it on the script? It's not a script, I told you. It's a guideline. No, I... I if it was a script, we'd need to read everything on it, but we don't need to read that bit. Okay, so we're missing that one out? Miss that one out, mate. Okay, what'll okay. be the next one on the script? University of Stirling. My fucking home team, Albion Rovers, get their arses felt after them in the Scottish Cup, out after extra time and penalties. Okay, amazing. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> we've got Drumchapel versus FC Edinburgh, one on the Scottish Cup. By the way, did you see the boy who had a bet on Drumchapel and Darvel as a double? I did, mate, but let's move on. So uh, <laughs> James McPake wins Manager of the Month as the Fernwind top week one. Now, that's twice in a row James McPake's won Manager of the Month in week one. Um, the family look what they're going to be coming oh, up. Oh, God, I. Do you think James McPake is better than that week? He did all right at Dundee. Mm-hmm. Got them up, didn't he? He got them up. Got them up into the Premier League when nobody would have given them a chance. <laughs> yeah. If they didn't have all that Celtic back in that year, they would have never no. have My pal Stephen Mill, he's a Dunfermline fan. Mm-hmm. And Dunfermline are not great to watch. Mm-hmm. They are a team that likes to sit in, mm-hmm. defend, they don't concede many goals, and they'll win 1 0, maybe 2 0. So it's not great to watch. So it's a really risky strategy. Yeah. But as long as you're winning, the fans will let you get away with it. But as soon as you start to lose a couple of mm-hmm. games playing that style of football where you're being hard to beat and you're not being very creative yeah. or uh, you're not going forward as often as the fans would like, then that's when you come unstuck. I think what James McPake is doing here. He's doing what it takes to, to get, get them out of that league. Correct. Whether it's ugly football, whether it's back to front football, mm-hmm. he doesn't care as long as he gets them out. And then it puts him back in a, a a decent position that he's not a bad manager after being sat from Dundee. That's fair enough. Do you yeah, know what I mean? So I think I think, he, I think he's used point, I. I think he's using Dunfermline as a stepping stone, and he's going to get them up any way he can. And he goes, "Look, I'm back." Well, that's it. And you know, I I actually went to school with James McPeak. So, oh, so do you know him? I know, know him. I know him, and I know. So why have you never? I don't. I don't know him. Right. So why have you never got him on the podcast? Well, then? do you know what? I know he's assistant a lot better, Martin Hardy. Right. right. So why have you not had him on the podcast? I've asked him about a hundred times. And what does he say? Just blanks me. Right. So, do you, so he clearly doesn't like you. Possibly, I. Right. So there must be a reason. Well, he's blanked you. I mean, and you and, and you you just said to me, quote unquote, I know him way better than James McPeak. That sounds like somebody you're going to have a pizza with. Hearty. I grew, I grew up with Hearty. Right, did yeah. you have a pizza with him? Did yeah. you go out with him? Did you hang out with him? Drank with him before. You drank with him, so that's pals. Oh. That's good pals. So what's happened between then and now? Eh, uh, that was at school, mate. Right. Fucking 25 years has happened for <laughs> then and now. He's a brick. So do you think, do you think he just doesn't remember you? Who, Hearty? Aye. Oh, Hearty knows me well, but James, James McPay, we, we never really knew each other very well, but okay. he, was at, he was at my school. But uh, he's one of the guys that you always want to do well, you know what I mean? Because Because you know all of them. But, but anyway, right, that's football. Out of the way, football. Out of the way, football. I've got some stories to tell you. Right. Now, Ewan, I know you're a man of means, so this sort of thing will not bother you at all, right? Uh-huh. However... Where the fuck is this going? I opened a, I opened a letter the other day. Uh, mate, this is, we don't just talk about football. I know talk, that, but right? just, again, again, you're not very good at this old segue, are no, you? Listen, they'll fix that, don't worry. <laughs> right, that's what they're here for. Mate, they make you look and sound great, by the this way. It, the boys behind the scenes here. See, if it was on radio, I would be a shambles. <laughs> right, they they edit the show to the point where it's listenable. There we go, there we go. And you listen every single week. I do listen every single week. What's anyway, the, What's the name of your one again? Uh, two pints on a shot. Right, okay. No, what's that? You're stealing our name and a Bigfoot Scottish football podcast. What's two pints on a shot? A pint, this is a it. pint and two oh, shots. A pint and two shots. Right, anyway, listen, getting back to what we were saying, so right. I got a letter through the other day, I open it up, uh-huh. it says, Chris, in big bold letters, you have overpaid on a loan for years ago. <gasps> here's a here's a cheque for 930 quid. Brilliant, right? Amazing. Delighted. Amazing, right? yeah. Handed my card back, at, well, I'm due to hand my card back after its lease, Open the next letter. Good condition bonus. 
350 quid. I'm like, oh, fucking hell, I'm up a bag of sand yeah. just for opening two letters. Yeah. Right, so a couple of days pass, and I go, I'll go and put the, the checks into the bank. Fucking lost them, you know. Yeah, literally lost the I've bits lost of paper. Them. Can't find them. Can't find them, mate. Over you know a grand. Do you know what the worst part is? To, I had the dog, right? Uh-huh. Yesterday, and at the vet, getting his eyes fixed, two eyes. So I, I had that money there for the two letters. I was like, I cracked it. That'll pay for the surgery. <sighs> I've been done, mate. I've been done. But can but. But they would have a record of that, that well, you're not taking the money out. They say that they've not got any record yet. However, I'll be going into the branch to... Sort it out. To sort it right So you then. should, at the end of the day, get that money that you've lost. I hope so. No, you will. I hope Because so. if you get sent the cheque, they'll have that somewhere on record that we've paid toll X day. amount of pounds. It's all right, but because I've got the Barcelona podcast coming and quadrupling, That's my, true. quadrupling my wage anyway. I'm so. going to tell you a wee story similar right, to that. You tell me a story. Do you remember all those years ago when there was that PPI thing going on? Mm-hmm. I don't, know, I don't know what it was for, but it was this... Remember yeah, it was all, uh, payment protection for loans. And all that kind of stuff, yeah. Stuff. So, I'm going back a few years now, and I didn't really care for that PPI thing. I'll be honest with you, I was, I just couldn't be bothered filling out the forms and all that kind of thing. So, um, unbeknown to me, my wife... Done it for you. Has done it. And I remember lying in my bed, and it was on a Friday morning. I was working at Real Radio at the time on mm-hmm. the football phone and with Ruffy. So I was lying in my bed, and um, and I heard trees are screaming down the stairs. I was like, what the? And then running up the stairs, bedroom door burst open. Oh, you thought you should find out about something, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and she was stood there with an envelope and a cheque. Much? £8,000. Unbelievable. £8,000 for the PPI. I could not believe it. And this was something I didn't care about, didn't even bother about, didn't, didn't even gosh. think about it. But Teresa just thought, I'll, I'll put it in and see what happens. Yeah, right. I Eight I, grand. When I know with something, I think I get about four. I think I get about four. Eight grand. Unbelievable. And I think I see when, like myself, like, I was not covered because I had previously existing medical conditions. So they sold me that knowing that I wouldn't have ever no. been used to it. Wow. So that was, a, that was a wee bit of retribution when I get that check. Totally, like, totally. That was great, wasn't it? Everybody was getting free money left, right? That, that was, it was so good, Fogging wasn't it? Fogging their feet up in Vegas and all of that. There's, there's another one that's going around just now if you own a certain car. Like diesel. The diesel thing. So yeah. I've got a diesel car and I've always had diesel cars. Mm-hmm. So off the experience of PPI, I've now gone and put the claim in for the car to see if I can get more money out of it. Yeah, I don't know if it'll work, but hey, if you don't fill in the form, because it's 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 a no win, no win, what is that? A no, no win, no fee. No win, no fee. Well, you know what they say, a shy Wayne doesn't get any sweeties, you That's a very good point. When I was away, I used to steal them for the shop. So I've got a script, and I've got to talk about Slange. And by the way, I know the boys at Slange. You do? Right? I've got kilts from them in the past. And so you can attest for the quality now? Oh, 100%. Now, if you're looking to get sorted out with pure quality kilt outfits, which I know personally they have, having bought and used and borrowed and loaned kilts from them, and also trousers as well, but they're not trousers, they're called trues. Trues? Trues, they're called trues. I used to be a trues. Right, the script here says trousers. It's not. It's trues. Tartan trues. You need to go and see the guys at Slange Kilts in Glasgow, and I can attest to that. They're brilliant. Great uh, quality. Uh, brilliant customer service. Good humoured. Good personality. You'll get a great experience. Uh, Slange also do their own tartan boxers, um, also known as pants. There we go. Yeah. Or, or skegs. Or skegs, yes. Uh, they do leisure wear through their Lucky Jock store. Well, this is this is a thing. This is a new football based oh, Lucky it? Jocks. There you go. And I think we've got a bag over there with some of them. Have they, have I've got jockeys like? on just now. I'm, I'm a jockey's guy. You're a jockey guy. Uh, wait, wait till you see these, mate. Right, so, what are you? Are you a boxer? Are you a jockey guy? Or are you just a strap guy? Kind of like a, a pouch thing? I'm a commando motherfucker. Are you commando? I'm a commando. Are you? Oh, they're good. Can I have them? I fucking bought them. Oh, they're good. See, that's... You that's, not want the hearts I, ones? I wear them. Do you not want the hearts ones? I, I, I genuinely wear those sorts of um, jocks. I think that's Partick Thistle. That's Partick Thistle. Those ones are Partick Thistle. These are Dundee United. Dundee United. United. Is this Aberdeen? That's Aberdeen, yep. Have you got hearts in there? Uh, 
We do have a pair of hearts. Oh, yeah, give us a heart, Shins. There you go, that's your fee. Thanks, mate. That's your fee, you. <laughs> no, thanks for that. No, listen, they're, they're probably they're good quality as well. Aye, they're really good quality, and do you know what? They're comfortable as well. Aye, no, that, really that's definitely my type of thing. So, yeah, lucky jocks, there you go. Um, do you know I've only, like I was saying to you there, I go commando, right? However... If two, you didn't two, go commando, no, two types of boxers that I've worn over the past couple of years have been unbelievable. I've mentioned a few of them before, but these ones are just as good. Okay, honestly, really comfortable. Uh, you can go check out their Scottish football tartans, which we've got some here with us, and they do feel amazing. I'll be taking them home with me, and I'll be going into the bathroom to get changed, and then doing a wee bit of a fashion show to the wife. What do you think? I'm a new jocks. They'll not be on long then, will they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, now um, they're out just now. Some boxers, or even a hip. Flip. Flask. Have we got a hip flask in? Well, no, we've no, we've only got the, the boxers. Okay. Uh, to increase your chances of, uh, your team's chances of victory. Uh, they donate 20% of all their lucky jock sales to, oh, that's brilliant. Oh, to the mental health charity. There you go. That's brilliant. S-A-M-H. It's, a, it's something that you're really involved in. I totally health just now. I'm, I'm, I'm like doing, um, I'm on therapy just now, sorting out my mental health. So, well done to Slange. Uh, use the code Pint two shots for ten percent of any Slange or Lucky Jocks products. More info can be found in the description. Is that the name of the podcast? <laughs> Pint two shots. Is that what it is? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So use the code Pint two shots for ten percent off the Slange or Lucky Jocks products, and also you'll be uh, contributing to the Scotland's mental health charity, which is brilliant. So as you know, if you've been listening to the show from week one, which I'm certain that you all have. Going by the viewing numbers. Um, we are sponsored by Performance Tires. Now, Performance Tires supply a wide range of high-quality performance tires at low, low prices. We've now got three branches in Annie's Land, Air and Kilmarnock. We? Yes. Do you own these things? Well, I wouldn't be sponsoring myself, would I? I'm reading their... Their script. Their script, right. So, they now have three branches. Annie's Land, Air and Kilmarnock covering all four points of the central belt. They stock all major tyre brands, Pirelli, Hankook, Avon, Uniroyal, Yokohama, Continental, Goodyear, etc. For cars, 4x4s, light trucks and vans. And they supply all season tyres, winter tyres and run flat tyres for all seasons. What's they a winter tyre? That's the tyres that you put on during the winter. Right, so, they are also... The main supplier of Lassa tyres throughout the central belt. And they provide a professional tyre fitting service and all branches of up to the minute fitting equipment to take care of those precious alloy wheels and provide the highest standard of computerised wheel balancing and accurate wheel alignment. So give them a call on 01419549344 or click the link in the description. That's 01419549344 or click the link in the description. You're a prick. <laughs> Hi. Hey. <laughs> Ask daft questions, get daft answers, you and for fuck's sake. G4 claims. Yes. Run by Nicole. Run by Nicole. When I first met Nicole, yes. I thought, she's a woman not to be messed with. She is frightening. She gives as good as she gets. It's like Freddy Krueger wrapped up in Marilyn Monroe. <sighs> Glad you said that, no me. <laughs> G4 Claims provides the quickest, most reliable and friendly service to anyone involved in a non-fault accident. Now, every G4 Claims customer is treated with the utmost professionalism and respect, even from Freddy Krueger, wrapped up in a Marilyn Monroe. Accidents are stressful, so please pass the worry and hassle on to us, and we'll make sure that Freddy Krueger, dressed up as Marilyn Monroe, will make it easy for you, and we'll get back to you and get you on the road as soon as possible. And if you want Freddy Krueger wrapped up in Marlon Monroe to help you out, <laughs> call this number 01698 767 172. That's 01698 767 172 or dial Freddy Krueger. Or visit 555 Krueger. <laughs> <laughs> you can also visit notatfault.com. And there's a link in the description. And a picture of Freddy. <laughs> he said that, by the way. Nicole's night day with me, it's him. It's he said that he's the one who's painted that picture in my head. I don't see you as Freddy Krueger. Michael Myers possibly, but no Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, over the past few weeks, apart from last week, we've done a wee segment that we like to call What Am I Saying? So You're we, ripping the piss at celebrity juice here. Do you know that? Don't show my teeth and stuff like that. Aye. Uh-uh. Can you not come with something original? Why uh-uh. are you copying everybody? Like last week when I was watching, uh-uh. Gredo's doing some eating challenge. Aye, because I'm a celebrity. It was on the telly, so it's called... It's kind of like a satire of stuff that's going on around about you. You rip the piss out of it, don't you? Come on I, I just think it's unoriginal. You, you tell me the last original idea you heard of. That's not the point. I expect, I see. I see, but I expect better for you, Toll. You really shouldn't. I do, and I expect better from Bob and Figredo. I mean, lowering yourselves to cheap gags. I mean, come on. But let's play because I'm really looking forward to playing. To be fair, we've lowered ourselves to a cheap replacement this week. So, <laughs> do I need the script? No, you don't need the script, right? right? So, rather than what am I saying, we're going to play what am I singing this week. <laughs> Stephen and Grado are here now. The rules are you, uh-huh. right? Yeah, I'm, you're going to put the headphones on. Yes, you're going I to have am. the hard style. Mm-hmm. Jamie's favourite hard style. What is it with Jamie and her style? He's just right in it. He's just right in it. Is that what his uh, Pornhub search engine he, would say? No, he goes to he goes to like see the underground raves in Amsterdam. All oh, right, that. okay. Goes to all of them. All ah, right, all right. So yeah. that's what her style means. Then up the then up the red light district for a wee bit more hard style, if you know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Yes. Anyway, so where's these headphones I need to wear? Right. So let me tell you the rules first. All right, right? go on. So you put the headphones on. Uh-huh. You're going to have the loud music in your ears. Right. I'm going to sing you a song, and when I stop, you've got to continue the song. The next line. Yes. Without hearing it? Without hearing You've got to read my lips. All right. And once it comes to the end, you've got to continue. So when you stop singing... When I stop, you've got to start. Got you. You Got it? Got it. Let's do it. That sounds good. Aye. We've got a segment out of this, and we've got another five minutes out of this. (laughs) So I need the headphones. Can I take these ones off then? Have you ever heard of anybody doing this? No, actually, haven't. Well, there's an original for you, isn't it? Here we go. Thank you, Jamie. Press the space bar. Let's see what it says. Power hour, one hour of the best hardstyle and hardcore songs. <laughs> Are you sure that it's no use pulling up fucking search engine? <laughs> <laughs> right. Is this going to be like really this? It's going to burst my eardrums? Yeah. Can I right. control you're the volume deaf, as well? Well, you said you'll be able to hear me. No, I can hear you now. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker right. answered me. Oh, you're that, you're that properly up. Hold on. Free from desire. Free from desire. Free from desire. Free from desire. Right, anyway, you eyes down looking. <laughs> Fucking hell, I've lost him. I've lost him to Jamie's play playlist. You ready? Right. Eh? Yeah. You ready? Yes. Right, get your sound done. Right. Three, two, one. My heart is broken. My heart is broken. We are the people. <laughs> we are the people. Well, yeah, again. My heart is broken. My heart is broken. Banger off the pogs. <laughs> Banger off the pogs. No, you're wrong. One more go, right? My heart is broken. My bang, heart is bang, broken. Bang, banger, banger. You're a banger. You're a banger. You're a banger. You're a banger. <laughs> Have you ever heard a song like that? Is it a football song? Yes. It's so you, right. you call the referee a banger? No. Sunshine on leaf. Sorrow, sorrow, sorrow. Sunshine only. Yes, there we go, there we go, there we go. Number one, so that's one point to you. Did I get that? Yes, you got it, that's right. What was the banger song? No, it was, my heart is broken. Broken, oh, this is banger. But it looked like you were also saying, we are the people. I only say that when nobody's looking. (laughs) (laughs) Right, go. Right, next one, right. I like big butts and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. When a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. I like big butts, but yes! I cannot lie. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Correct. Get in. Got it in two. Right. 
Ja, det. Etie, ATS. If you cannot spell, we'll tell you what it says. Hearts, hearts, glorious hearts. It's down. Hebs, hebs, hebs are shite. Hearts, hebs, hebs, hebs are. Hearts. Oh, hearts, hearts, glorious hearts! <laughs> yes! <laughs> It looked like you're saying hips were shite. Three, three out of three. Well done. Well done. I wish you were saying hips were shite. <laughs> Next one. You ready? Last. What is this? Next one. Next one. Right, okay. How many is there? Uh, there's another. What's it that? Two, three, this is good tunes, by the way. Another four. Another four. Aye. I'm enjoying this. Right. You ready? <laughs> right. A light shone in the night somewhere ahead. Blue. Turned into green and then it was red. One, two, three, four, step up and play the machine, seems to say as I walk round and round the. Was this a football song? Yep. Celtic Rangers. 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 It's a Rangers song. Yep. Do it again. <laughs> step up and play, these machines seem to say as I walk round We're and round. We're simply the best, better than. No. <laughs> Follow, follow, no. <laughs> See, you're giving away the amount of Rangers songs you know here. Right, uh, as I walk round and round the Penny Arcade. Just ring the bell on the big bag of tail and you'll see all the coloured lights cascade. And the music played at the Penny Arcade. No? Da, da, da. Penny Arcade, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Were you actually singing that? Aye, mate. That used to be my karaoke song before they stole it, the bastards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, we played and we played. Are we um, just doing football songs? Uh, no, it's, it's, they're, they're linked to football. They're linked to football. All right, OK, go on, right. next one. Right, you ready for this one? That's a hard one. It's a hard one. Go on. Chelsea, Chelsea, Celtic, Celtic, Chelsea, Celtic, Chelsea, 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 Celtic. Chelsea. Celtic. Chelsea. Celtic, Celtic. <laughs> Chelsea, Chelsea. Celtic, Celtic. Yeah, I'm not going to get this one. Is it one. Celtic? No. It's not Celtic? No. And you do with Celtic? No. Go. Chelsea, 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 Chelsea. Shellfish, shellfish. Shellfish? Sounds like. Sounds like. Shell. Shellfish. Chell. Jelly. Chell. Ch- Jill. Ch- Who's Jill? Chell. Shell. Ah, I'm not getting your Chelsea. 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 <laughs> You're meant to continue the song. The lyrics were easy. Right, are you ready for the um, next go one? On. Yeah, go right. on. It's coming home, it's coming home, it's coming, football's coming home, it's coming it's home. Coming home. It's, it's coming home, it's coming home, it's coming home. Football's coming home. Video Skinner. Right, that's it, three Lions, so you've got five out of six so far. That's not bad, actually. This is the last one. Last now, one. with this one, uh-huh. I want you to continue singing it. I want you to sing it through to the end. Right, right? through the end, yeah. do I know it? Oh, you better. Okay, do it. <laughs> For it's a grand old team to play for. Fernando. For it's a grand old hey, team Fernando. to see. And if you know the history, it's enough to make your hearts go. Start again. For it's a grand old team to For it's a grand old team to play for. For it's a grand old team to see. And if... Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's it's, the, the, it's <laughs> enough to make your heart go. We don't care what the jam tarts say. What, what the hell do we care? For we only know that well, there's going to be a show when the clubs go, Celtic will be there. <laughs> We're simply the best. Oh, shit. Better than all the rest. Are you when I need you? My heart's on fire. <laughs> H-E-A-R-T-S If you can't spell it, then here's what it says. Hearts, hearts, glorious hearts. It's down in Tyne Castle, they bide. The boys they in Maroon bide? are the That's best in the, the new tune. Ones in 
And old Ricky supports on Way Pride because this is my story. This is my song. Follow the heart, sad. You can't go wrong. For some say the Celtic and Rangers are grand, but the boys in Maroon are the best in the land. H-E-A-R-T-S. <laughs> if you can't spell it, then here's what it says. Rangers, Rangers. Uh, you're getting mixed up with yeah. your season ticket yeah. sale, mate. <laughs> Well, I seen by the way, six out of seven, not bad. That was not bad. And the only one you never got was for down south, so that's fair enough. Which I one was it? Chelsea, oh, Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. Well, thanks very much for doing by that. By the way, his hardcore music's good. You should see his hardcore oh, videos. Hardcore music. <laughs> hey, what do we do now? Do we need right, to go so back to script? We've done, no, we've done a wee bit for our podcast. Aha. Uh-huh. Why, why do we do something for my podcast? Why don't we introduce something for your podcast? Right, here, so we do a podcast that's Shun and Cat Uncut, right? right we get okay. some Scottish celebrities and we have a chat with them, a bit of a laugh. Right. And at the end of our podcast, we have a thing called the Bowl of Destiny. Can the camera get that? So in the Bowl of Destiny, there are a number of random questions. Right, okay. And you, Toll, will pick a question. How about all three of us pick a question? Well, Jamie. Jamie and, and ben, ben. As well. I'm get, not doing get them that. In, get them in front of the cameras. Ah, let's do that. Do you want to get in front of the cameras, boys? Up for that. Yeah, up for that. Ben, you come and kneel beside me. Jamie, you go and kneel beside Toll. So we're going to do the the Bowl of Destiny. Now, what happens here is you get to pick out a question. Now, you can forfeit that question, but if you do forfeit that question, you must then answer the second question. You pick out the bowl. Okay, so you're allowed to forfeit one One question. No matter what the next question is, you've got to answer it. You've got to answer it. Bowl of Destiny. Right, okay. Right, Ben, you go first. Pick 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 a question of destiny. For me to answer. Yes, for you to answer. But you don't need to answer that one if you don't want to answer it. Oh, this is easy. This is easy. There you go. What is it? What do you value most in a friend? Oh, that's nice. What do you value most in a friend? Answer it. Humour. That was quite an easy one, wasn't it? I know, there's some easy oh, ones in there. Right, yeah, Jamie, your turn, mate. I bet you I get a bastard there question. You need to get in front of your microphone, Jamie. Do you want to answer that question or do you want to take another one? Debating it. Should he answer it, oh, yeah. Toll? Oh, well, I'll take You've this. I've never one. heard of somebody being as happy as a dog with two dicks. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the question? The question is if I had to have an extra body part, what would the extra part be? Go on. You know you want to. Toll's answer there was good, so I'm considering that one, but I think I would take an extra horn. An extra hand? An extra hand? Aye. Right. Secret chugging. Exactly. <laughs> nobody would know because nobody would be looking for it. <laughs> Secret chugging for Jamie. Right, Toll, right, your okay, turn. Okay, here we go. Give me something meaty here, you, and we'll go right down to the bottom where all the hard questions are. You can either, you can have that. This is a good one. You can have that or put it back in. Do you want that one? I, th- I don't know if we could actually air my answer to this one. <laughs> well, what's the question then? What's your favourite conspiracy theory? Get it. Right, okay. Want to hear it? Because it's conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theories. What's your what's the best one? What's the one that you love the most that you will watch documentaries on? You'll read about it. You'll every, go to, everybody's going to say nine eleven, aren't they? You know everyone I mean? says nine eleven. Right. Um, they also say the moon Prince landings. Princess Diana. Moon landing. Moon landings. The lot. I'm lot. going to put this back in, and I'm going to get another one because I'm going to retread old ground where I, everybody's everybody's got the same opinions. Right. On okay. So you're going to go with another one, but it's a good question. That is a good question. What What do you think about the moon landing? Um, I don't know, mate. I wasn't there. But do you think it was staged, or do you think we actually landed on the moon? I don't know. I don't. I don't know because. Do you think there's more chance of it being staged than actually happening? Because the Russians were so close to getting there, I think they had to do something. Aye, okay. Definitely. Right. Right. Would you ever read someone else's texts? Aye. Oh, mate. Aye. You, you. You wouldn't. They? No, not. I wouldn't go into somebody's phone and read them. However. If there's somebody sitting next to me on a train <laughs> and they're on their phone fo- and they're on their phone reading their text, you get that one, don't you? <laughs> See if you're sitting next to a psychopath or no. So you're having a wee nosy at somebody else who's texting in a train oh. or in a plane or in a bus, you're having a wee look. Oh, he's, he's, Is that a bit he's like what he's soul tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Are you like that when you're stood at your urinal? Do you have yeah. a wee look to your right I can't and your left? Your you I need to go into the fucking cubicle. <laughs> Somebody needs to hold me up to use a urinal. That's the one great advantage of dwarfism. You don't need to stand next to folk doing a pitch. If you did, do you think you'd have a wee look to the right and the left? 
Probably. Probably. I'll and, tell, what, tell what, and, what, and what would you be looking for? Would you be looking at just to compare? I don't know. I think it's just curiosity, in it? But what? But you? But they, they all look the same, more or less. No, they don't. What do you mean? Yeah, that's penis racism. <laughs> <laughs> Penisism. <laughs> they don't all look the same. He's a penisist. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you're just curious to see. I don't know. Right, I'll tell you a story. Right, we were at Tina Park one year, uh-huh. and my mate, who will remain nameless. Right. Do we know him? Was doing a was doing no, you don't know him. He's, okay. he's right. So he's doing a piss in a trough, right? As you know what it's like at Tina Park, right. big, big troughs. And this this big guy comes in, stands next to him, turns around, and goes like that. You've not got much to play with there, mate, have you? Right. Now imagine somebody said that to you. I'll not tell you his answer. I'll I'll not tell you his answer because it quite frankly it was outrageous what he said to the guy. But I it's You don't do you? Don't, yeah. you, you, you just don't. You, it's all well and good having a wee sideways glance, but you don't comment on somebody's dick. Nah, you don't. You know I mean, not, I mean like, not like the good old days when you could get away with that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you get cancelled for that now. I've never had a sideways look at any time I've used a urino. I've no. never done it. I've got no curiosity. I've got no no but interest to look. If it, if it was look. me, I need to look because I might get some of the shrapnel. <laughs> I mean, some I mean, of the friendly fire. Need to wear a hazmat suit to go for a piss. <laughs> Raining down on you. <laughs> the splash splash. Excuse me, sir, will you be taking your umbrella with you into the toilet? <laughs> Can I borrow this for a second? <laughs> While I go into the danger zone. Excuse me, have you got any of the advisors for COVID? <laughs> I'm now picturing it. I know. You stood there. I know, mate. Getting splashed back. That's why I stopped wearing my specs. <laughs> you wee window wipers. It's like the batteries ran out. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, man. So, to answer your question, I, I, I maybe would have a wee look. I would have a wee, look, I would have a wee swatch. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out my way. Right, anyway, Ewan, you got me out of hole this week, mate. I really I, I listen, I, w- I was happy to come on board. What's the name of this podcast again? Um, I, oh, hold on. The oh. Joe Rogan Experience. No, hold on. It says here in the top of my script, a pint and two shots. How have you got a script? I've only got pointers. No, nah, I've got a script. A pint and two shots. It's got your three mugs at the top of the logo. Um, it's been a joy. I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and I was more than happy to come in. Um, but there is a better football podcast out there called the Big Scottish Football Podcast. Folk up daft. <laughs> No, I have no night day with Falkirk Daft. It's a, it's a big Scottish football podcast. See, ours is out on a Monday. Right. And you're out on a Friday. We're out on a Friday. Yeah, right. so, so there's no... There's no, there's no, there's no overrun. We there's can, no overrun. We, we can coexist. Yeah, we can coexist. And, I mean, football... We're football, all pals, we're all, we? we're all pals. By the way, can I just say... Yes. You do have a very good podcast. Thank you very much. And I think much, you're doing mate. a very good job Thank because... Thank um, I also started this off. So you're, you're, do, you're looking after my baby. <laughs> this is it. And the reason that you left... You're never going to find out. No, no, because that bit was cut. <laughs> I bet we're leaving the question in, Ewan. <laughs> you want to leave the question in? No the question problem. In. <laughs> totally, totally. Thanks, Toll. You're welcome, mate. But again, thanks very much, and thanks everybody for listening. Remember, subscribe, like, share, do everything that you do that puts money into your pocket. I mean, uh, that helps us along the way. <laughs> You can see he's already a corporate whore with a fucking logo on his uh, but t-shirt. Listen, remember, if Barcelona come calling, I'm fucking off. You did say that. This is it. But anyway, folks, thanks very much. And as Grado says, what does he say? He, end he just says some random shit, doesn't he? Uh, okay, dokies. <laughs> <laughs>